This is the recording for the Unit 1 homework quiz. And first of all, I'm going to show you what you find in the Unit 1 folder. As, online, as, as faculty who are teaching online classes, we're advised to list assignments and objectives first. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So read through the chapter, do the homework quiz, work through these worked out problems. Eventually, as you fill out the homework quiz, you're also going to take the practice test. So that's what I listed here. And the proctored exam right here. Watch the Mechanical Universe videos and then read through the supplementary book. Okay, as I said, we're supposed to list assignments and objectives first. This is what you should learn in this particular unit on motion and some of the algebra and uh, related things that you should learn here. This is actually the homework quiz. That's what's going. That's what this recording will be about. So I'm going to get to it very soon. And then right beneath it, there's a number of items that feed into the homework quiz. So that's why I'm listing this one here, homework quiz one. Look at questions four and five. This is where this is coming from. This is a relatively short Excel sheet, basically explaining the symbols that we're using which are symbols from the alphabet such as the v for velocity or mph miles per hour or the dollar sign okay we don't have that one in, in physics just an example here all right this one here is very important throughout the entire semester no this is a 90 page word document where basically answer all the computation problems that you will find in the book these are some of those computation problems that I also have as a recording. So this one here is the print version of that. I have recorded not all of them, but a select few for each unit. And that's what you will find in these recordings. And again, it says your homework was one question six, for example. This one is the extra book that you should read on the side, certain chapters from that. Here you can see what is assigned. Falling balls, bouncing balls, skating, motion, obviously. Mechanical Universe videos that you have to watch. This is, um, it looks outdated. It's from the 1980s, but it's still pretty good. I mean, physics um, has no um, time limits. We're, we're still teaching things that were relevant for have been relevant for a long time and then we have here a sort of lecture on metric system motion this one here does not feed into the homework quiz all right so let's get to the homework quiz there you go and I have already opened it so here it is homework quiz one so that's what you would have to do first question will always be the same on the homeworks so this is gonna be I do adjust it here a little bit. So here that you either attended the class or that you um, attended voluntary collaborate sessions, that you watched my recordings for the worked out problems and have read through the worked out problems, watched the mechanical universe, and that you have read through the chapters and you answer yes on this actually an extra credit question. This one here, question two, the description is quite long, but basically what I want you to do is look in the chap look in the book for the relevant chapter. In this case, that would pre for homework one, it would be pretty much chapter three, and identify an exercise that you want to answer. You copy the question and then you answer it. So what I did here as my example is I say, okay, this is on the 10th edition for you, you might be using the 11th or the 12th. And I'm looking in chapter 3, and there's number 18, and it says in there, can you sign an example in which the acceleration of a body is opposite in direction to its velocity? If so, what is your example? And I didn't type the whole thing, but I ask you to type the whole thing because I don't want to open um, the book all the time. 
trying to find people's questions. So then you type all also the answer. Again, I didn't type the whole thing. So I say, yes, there is such an example. And then I give it. Well, whenever my car is traveling forward, my velocity is forward. But when I hit the brakes, my acceleration is actually backward. I know I call it deceleration. But in physics, we would call it negative acceleration. In this case, the acceleration would be in the opposite direction. Or if I'm driving backwards, that means, yeah, my velocity is backwards and I'm hitting the brakes, in which case my acceleration is actually forward because on my way back, I'm slowing down. So my acceleration needs to be in the opposite direction. So this my that would be an example here of what you would have to list for a question and answer to this particular homework question. All right, question three is about objectives. And you found that in the unit, I pointed them out. I believe all of these here apply, so you would have to check all of these. So this particular chapter is about motion, but it also is about physical quantities, units, significant figures, and how to apply these concepts and algebra, things like that. Question four. So this is about that Excel sheet that I mentioned earlier. Again, it's a relatively quick one. And... The nice thing here is that when it comes to the symbols that we're going to use throughout the course, they are based on English. As in many abbreviations that we use, those will be in English. This one here is the physical about the physical quantities, which is the symbol in front of the equal sign. So each expression takes on three parts. V equals 55. MPH means this is the physical quantity, V, velocity. This is the number that is measured or determined or given, 55 in this case, and that is the unit that is attached to it, miles per hour. Of course, I could say that I was driving 55, and everybody knows what that means, but when it comes to physics, we need to be more accurate and we really need to say v equals 55 mph and of course these are abbreviations because we're not always writing velocity equals 55 miles per hour i mean this already is an abbreviation we say 55 but we write it as a number of course and we do the same thing then with the symbols so what you see then for the physical quantities here is m stands for mass t for time d H for distance and height, A for acceleration, and you see this over here, G for acceleration due to gravity, V for velocity, capital F for force, by the way, lowercase f would be frequency. That's in a later chapter. Notice the little p here. Obviously, there is no m for momentum because the m was already taken up for mass, so the momentum has to take on another symbol and if you look at the Excel sheet, you will see that's what word it actually comes from. So sometimes we have to deviate a little bit, but most of all, physical quantities are based on English. Same thing for units. Most of the time, they are based on um, English. So you have G for grams, S for seconds, M for meters, M per S squared, meters per second squared, M over S, meters per second, capital N for newtons, kilogram meters per second. Notice also what I put on here, uh, put, put in here. You can see these numbers here. I listed them as 7.0, 3.00. When that happens, you must assume that it really is 7.0, not 6.9 or 7.4 round it. No, it really is very close to 7.0, round it to 7.0, and that means it's that accurate to two significant figures. Here it's three significant figures. I did so many zeros here because the zeros really is what's tripping people, and here it's very clear that I wouldn't list the zero if it wasn't as accurate. So this is not an 18.6 rounded to 20. No, no, it really is 20.0 in this example. All right, let's go on to the next one. So this one here comes from the worked out problems in physics. And as I said, I have this entire document written with lots of problems, all the problem calculation problems that you will find in whatever edition you're using. Students are allowed to use any of these 10th, 11th, or 12th editions. And they're all in that 90-page Word document. And a number of them are also in my videos that you can watch. 
So here, I pretty much give it away here. So as I say, chapter three, problem one, chapter three, problem two, problem three, you will find them in there. And I pretty much give it away here that time t equals 2000. Well, it's going to be either years or seconds. I believe if you look into it, it is actually years, but I have like to double check. It says acceleration. Well, acceleration usually is meters per second squared. Here in this case, I believe it is kilometers per hours and seconds. So again, look that up in the um, WAPIP, what I call it, worked out problems in physics. Here, um, height equals 45. Well, that's usually in meters. Acceleration, A equals negative 10. In this case, I believe it is meters per second squared, but I do check it out. Velocity, V equals negative 100, usually meters per second. Let's see, actually there's a kilometers per hour, so look it up. This one is actually really straightforward. You can almost cheat by just looking at this, your time acceleration and so on. Respectively, you can go to the worked out problems and just copy paste there. But of course, I do ask you to also calculate those problems and look at them and become familiar with them, how to do those calculations. All right, let's see. I have another one here. Distance equals negative 500 meters. I have some down here. Time, as example, it's 0.35 seconds. And so on. All right, next question. Choose which values for the acceleration due to gravity on or Earth, on or near Earth's surface are permissible in this physics course when applied to corresponding problems. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. You will find that in any kind of physics textbook. Our textbook uses this number, but it also uses this number here because it's so nice. The 9.8 is so nice next to 10, and I allow that too. So you can use in your calculations either one of those 9.8 or 10. And when it comes to calculations on the practice test or the proctored exam, I allow you to do use either one as, as yeah, use either one, and as long as you come up with the correct answer for that particular 9.8 or 10, you will get the full credit because I have some kind of tolerance behind the scenes. So 9.8 or 10. 10 makes it kind of easy. Something falls for 5 seconds, and it will have a velocity of 50 because 5 times 10 is 50 meters per second after 5 seconds. If you took the lap, if you are taking the lap, G can be also 9.82 meters per second squared. It's a little bit different in Alaska. In the lower 48, it's actually 9.80. I'm from Germany. And in our textbooks, it's 9.82. Apparently, it has to do a little bit with latitude, but that's a topic for another day. G equals 1.6 meters per second squared on the moon. Well, that's true, but right here it says acceleration due to gravity on or near Earth's surface. So even though this number is true, it doesn't answer the question up here. By the way, the G itself is a positive number, but when you plug it into the, an equation, you actually put a negative in front of it. As something is falling down, it's falling down a distance, which is negative, so there needs to be a negative in front of it. Or if something is going up, there needs to be a negative in front of the acceleration because the acceleration is pointing down while an object is being being thrown upward. That was my example earlier that something is, the acceleration is in the opposite direction of something that's moving. I made my example of the car, now I'm describing in mid-air something that you throw up, I'm sorry about the word, and then the acceleration is in the opposite direction. So again, G itself is positive number. positive number. Once you plug it into the equation, there has to be a negative in the front. All right, question eight is about the extra book that I'd like you to read. So there's something on falling balls in here. I didn't read through this particular chapter as I was looking at that, but I'm sure that a chapter on falling balls, that somehow the weight is involved here, acceleration is in here, speed, force, acceleration to do gravity is, is in there. But read through that and answer the others. Perhaps friction if air resistance is um, taken into account. All right, question nine. These are the Mechanical Universe videos. You usually have to watch two, sometimes three. And I put certain quotes or descriptions that you will find in the videos in here. And I give a couple of them away. I say the very first one is the Greek, starts with the Greeks. That's what I say here, hint, is the first quote. The Greeks is the first quote. And then we have discovered as the fifth quote, 
So I'm giving these away here. They're, we have discovered as the fifth quote, and you would have to figure out where the others are. I want people to watch these videos once because they are instructive. I don't want people to watch them more than once just because they you need to get these quotes in the correct order. I will notice that if you accidentally flip a couple of them, I will notice that you actually watched all the videos and I will give you full credit. So let's see. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Okay, there is an extra credit question during which decade were the Mechanical Universe videos produced. And that was the recording for the Unit 1 homework quiz.